Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. This is the fourth message in this precious land. And before I begin yet again, we ask permission of the ancestors for this message in this place, in this amazing alcove where the ancients lived. We've been here before one time and it's just as amazing now. The energy of the ancestors remains and remains through generation after generation the ancestors will always be here and the chief reason for that is that they would always be available for wisdom and help for those who would be in this place who would walk the land and that includes the visitors for it's time to share the wisdom of the ancients learned right here with those who would consider them from modern culture who need to know so much that no one has ever told them and so we ask permission of these ancestors at this point for what we are going to give and the message which is just a little different yet again Dear ones, you may be aware, especially here, of the four sacred directions. And it plays very significantly to this culture and how they approach spirit. And they're not alone. For there are cultures all over the planet who will honor the four sacred directions before they will do anything else. I'm going to do something we have done in other places like this. The four directions have names. And they are the names supposedly of the compass. Now if I were to follow the protocol of the culture here, I would honor them in a certain order and I'm not going to do that. And the reason is we're going to honor them in a very unique way. And it would be different every single time. If I sat here tomorrow, it would be different then. It's like this. The wind blows not necessarily from one sacred direction. And if the wind blows from a certain direction, the one who is tuned in to the land would understand what's coming or what that means or if a season is changing too abruptly or if there is weather shifting that is unusual it has to do with water it has to do with hunting it has to do with all of the things that you would have to survive if the wind blows another direction it's the same and you never know which direction the wind will come from or go toward. And so what I am saying in this parable is that at this moment the wind is blowing from one sacred direction and so it's going to change the order that we will speak of the directions. It's the wind of the day. And in this, I'll also say, we're not going to honor the directions, but instead do something we've done before. We're going to take the first initials of the letters of the directions in English. And in this moment, assign meanings to them for teaching. So let us speak first and honor the East. And today the East, starting with the letter E, is going to stand for enlightenment. Now what would I have 
to speak of regarding enlightenment is such a common name and word and meaning and there are so many old souls listening right now who would say yes I understand what that means so I'm going to redefine it enlightenment today is going to be any single human being who sits there and knows that they don't know everything because what comes next that they don't know becomes a light that shines upon something that they didn't know therefore an enlightened human being could be anywhere at any time and it doesn't necessarily have to do with spirituality or culture any single human who says I know what I have been told and I know my traditions and I know the ancients and I know my parents and I know my church but I am open for something newer and grander because the times are changing and the wind is blowing from another direction we have said this before the creator is the creator and never changes the earth is the earth and never changes but what does change is the relationship of the human being to all of that therefore as much as you think you know or even that which your ancestors have told you there may be more for as your consciousness starts to raise the earth may show you more than it's even shown the ancestors as your consciousness starts to raise the creator the veil the angelic realm whatever you wish to call it may very well show you more than you had before and so it's the allowance of that that creates an enlightened human being to show you how practical this is and the fact that it's not necessarily allied to belief systems imagine the difference between an enlightened and unenlightened physicist <laughs> now the physicist who is unenlightened is the one who says I believe everything that has been discovered is accurate and true and the laws of physics are static and they don't move and this is the way the universe works and I can prove it over and over and over and have done so all my life the enlightened physicist is the one who says that and also says but it can change and the things that change that may surprise the physicist is as follows physics in an older energy is where you measure things to discover what you consider the laws and you write them down and that becomes that which is solid unchangeable and that's the way you work and you work with that which you need to in all the inventions and in all that you believe you created a law and it is forever and the enlightened physicist says yes but I know that it's not a law it's simply a default in other words when you don't change anything that's what you get to the physicist who might be listening if you're going to measure the things that Newton has measured that you believe that he has given you that you have used for so long you can start to look at the elements of the formulas of physics especially that of gravity and you have things called mass and density and you look at those and you say if this is this and this will be this and that will weigh this and that what if any of those were variable what if you could change mass you have a marble on a table and you know all about it because you know how much it weighs where it is how fast it will fall and how it will move 
and you write it down and you move on. Meanwhile, the marvel is sitting there and saying, yes, but what if you changed my mass? I might not weigh as much. I might not then do what you think. What if all the laws were only defaults, just waiting for you to change some of the parameters? That is an enlightened physicist who says, I don't know what I don't know, but nothing is forever. There is no law which is unchangeable. And when you plug this into your everyday life, dear ones, you walk around and you say, I know what my mother told me and my father told me and my church told me. And I respect them and I'm using them. But I'm always open in case it gets better. I'm always open for something that is even grander that might be new and enhance everything. Wouldn't it be spectacular if right now the earth started speaking to you in a way that it never did before? And if you said, why now? It would say, because humanity is to a place where they can hear it and before they could not. Does that make your grandfather wrong? Does that make your parents wrong? Does that make your church wrong? No, it does not, because they were only hearing what was possible. And now in a new energy of enlightenment, more things are possible and more things are hearable and seeable. And it starts to then change everything you do. This message like so many others, is controversial. Because there are those who say, don't confuse me with what I've been told. And that's the difference between enlightenment and non-enlightenment. And that is E for East. Let us go to the South and use the letter S, and it's going to be for synchronicity. Synchronicity is considered to be luck, sometimes considered chance. You're at the right place at the right time, and synchronicity will create then something special for you. Part of the new energy, even that of where the earth speaks to you differently, is expecting things that used to be chance. Now I sit here in a land where those ancestors always tried to tell you that you could control chance. And that is for the weather, it is for hunting, it is for survival, that if you do certain things certain ways and expect certain things, the earth will cooperate. This is ancient information, and now you're relearning it on a day-by-day -day basis. Dear ones, consciousness is energy. And if you put that energy to work in expectations, you actually can warp the whole idea of chance. And you can bring it to yourself. Cryon, are you saying that we can control certain things outside of normal control. Yes. Can you go to a place expecting to meet somebody you think you might need to know, with information you might need to have? And the answer is yes. It has to do with designed consciousness. How you posture your life. Do you go from place to place with an attitude that nothing will ever change or that nothing is going to get better for you? Do you go and, 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 and have a, a position or, or an attitude of sameness all the time and just walk through life? Well, I'll say it again. This is so profound, dear ones. Consciousness is so profoundly energy and works so well that if that's what you think, that's what you'll get. 
If you say to yourself, nothing good ever happens to me, you have just placed an order with the universe that nothing good will ever happen to you. It's almost like there was an entourage of ancestors listening to what you want. As described by you, out of your own mouth, out of your own consciousness, and you say, woe is me. Nothing ever changes for me. No, nothing ever good, nothing good will happen. And there's so much of this, dear ones, out of the mouths of so many in a culture who have been trained into that. That the ancestors will sit around and, and hear that and go, and this is what you shall have. But for the human being who understands that the consciousness can actually change chance, you then can give that order like on a menu. I will meet the right person who has the right information. I'll be in the right place at the right time. And you walk from place to place expecting good things to happen. Expecting that which will enhance your life. And I'm sitting here telling you that makes a difference. And it's not wishful thinking. It's you creating with the energy of consciousness. Can you change the weather with the energy of consciousness? Dear ones, yes, yes. And the ancients have been doing it for thousands of years. And that was S. The North is going to be the N, and I cannot help myself, it's the new human. The new human is what I have been talking about for so many years. A human being who looks nothing like the historical human being. The new human who sits and understands the energy of compassion and how it works. The new human who will be placed in so many areas of life, not just that which is spiritual. You'll find the new human emerging, believe it or not, in politics. You'll find the new human emerging, believe it or not, in corporate work. The human who starts to understand a new process of how people think. And what people really are starting to want that history would say they never wanted before. The new human has one specific attribute that is so different from the older human. The older human looks at history and says it will repeat. What has happened before will happen again. It's a circle. Take a look. Don't expect anything different. The new human will understand that it does not have to repeat because there are new attributes coming and here that will then change the future and the potentials of everything. The new human gives an attribute of not hope but of actual designed reality. The new human will understand that when new things are happening regarding consciousness that it cannot repeat an old consciousness in the future. Therefore, what I'm telling you, the past does not count as a measurement for what is coming. And the longer you exist, the more you will see this, dear ones. And there will be always those who will be naysayers in this and say you're crazy. You've got thousands of years of humanity to look at and you've got human nature to look at and you're launching out as though it didn't matter or it didn't work that way. The new human will face off with that person and says it doesn't work that way anymore. It's coming. Some of you already see it in some of the things that are happening on the planet. The last sacred direction that we wish to talk about is West. You see, they're not in the correct order. West today 
right now is going to stand for women. Dear ones, do not misunderstand the words of Cryon if you are just listening to this for the first time. This has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with that which you would call the rights of women. It has everything to do with common sense. And what you're going to start to see is that there will be an acknowledgement that women do something better than men. And the first is giving birth. <laughs> Add on to that what they do after they give birth. They train their children. They have compassion. They have patience. As a child in trouble, who's the one you ran to? It was your mom. The women carry the equipment mentally and consciously to be spiritual guides of this planet. They have the highest intuition factor of either gender. And that will then allow them to have the shamanic energy that you need to guide you into the future. Right now, dear ones, there are many belief systems on this planet that are male heavy. And I will tell you, they cannot remain that way. They'll dwindle. And if they're listening right now, I'll tell you it has nothing to do with politics or war or anything. It has to do with your young people who will not agree. What happens to a culture when your young people look at it and say, not for me, and leave? And the answer is, it starts to dwindle and everything precious to you will start to leave because no one will be interested. Indeed, you're going to start seeing this revelation in certain belief systems where men only in the past have had leadership and now women are starting to have it as well. And when they both have it, it'll be obvious who does a better job. And slowly and slowly, you will see the feminine like the mother is the one you're going to want to turn to for spiritual advice as strong as the men are the women can do it better and dear ones this has been the way of it in ancient times and is starting to return today and so as the wind blows in this moment as I sit in this chair with my partner these are the attributes that I wanted to talk about that just happen to honor the four sacred directions. And so it is.